Share prices of rubber glove makers climbed today, led by top glove in terms of percentage gain, as the new Omicron wave sweeping the world spurred renewed interest in healthcare counters. Top glove rose to as high as 2 ringgit 47 before settling at the close at 2 ringgit 35 sen, still up 18 sen or 8.3 percent. The counter was also among the most actively traded stocks, with about 76.68 million shares exchanging hands. Hartalega Holdings was also among the top gainers, climbing to as high as 5 ringgit 97 before pairing some gains to end the day at 5 ringgit 83, still up 23 sen or 4.1 percent. Also up today were Supermax Corp, which gained 4 sen or 3.2 percent to 1 ringgit 30 sen, and Kosan Rubber Industries, which advanced 8 sen or 4.4 percent to 1 ringgit 91. As for their smaller peers, Care Plus Group was up 8.5 sen or 9 percent at 1 ringgit 3 sen. Comfort Gloves rose 4.5 sen or 4.7 percent to 1 ringgit 1 sen, and Rubberex Corp Malaysia closed 2.5 sen or 5 percent higher at 52.5 sen. Fortress Capital Asset Management CEO Thomas Yong said the new Omicron wave has raised expectations that the elevated demand for gloves will be sustained for longer than initially anticipated. But, he told the edgemarkets.com, concerns remain on the sustainability of global demand, margin compression from lower selling prices and difficult determination of fair valuation. Minister Kairi Jamaluddin says the resurgence in COVID-19 infections has not strained the national health system as new daily cases continue to climb to 11,034 today. As the highly infectious Omicron variant rears its head, Kairi said the spike in new cases is not unexpected, pointing to the increase in infections worldwide. He expects the latest wave to peak in the later part of March. Still, his ministry will be reactivating the National COVID-19 Rapid Response Task Force to keep the situation under control by adding beds and modifying non-COVID-19 beds, building field hospitals and transferring patients to private hospitals, among others. Kyrie noted that the healthcare system is still able to cope with a rising caseload, largely thanks to the country's high vaccination rates, noting that most of the infections are also asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic cases. According to the minister, unvaccinated individuals are nine times more likely to be infected and 62 times more likely to die of COVID-19 compared to individuals who have received their booster jabs. Of particular concern is Malaysia's senior citizens, who make up 57% of the country's 32,034 cumulative deaths. Currently, 1 million senior citizens, or 32% of the elderly, have yet to take their COVID-19 booster dose. The KL High Court has ordered Serba Dynamic Holdings to make public the fact-finding update by its special auditor EY Consulting by this coming Wednesday. To recap, Bursa Malaysia Securities had last November filed an originating summons to compel Serba Dynamic to disclose the fact-finding update of the Special Independent Review dated September 30, 2021, conducted by EY. This was due to Serba Dynamic's failure to comply with the Stock Exchange's directive last October for the disclosure. In the decision today by Judicial Commissioner Wan Muhammad Amin Wan Yahya, the court said it is empowered to grant reliefs sought by Bursa. It said Bursa is entitled under Section 11 of the Capital Market Services Act 2007 to give the directive in order to uphold and maintain a fair and orderly securities market to safeguard the public and investors' interests as well as take the appropriate action under the main market listing requirements for the purpose of monitoring and ensuring compliance of the requirements. It ruled that the information sought to be announced in the fact-finding update is material and does not depend on whether it is true, false or conclusive, adding that Serba Dynamic is entitled to disagree with the information to be disclosed. The court also dismissed Serba Dynamic's application to expunge parts of Bursa's affidavit which relate to the fact-finding update. <music> 
MACC officers raided several Mara officers today over alleged integrity issues involving a number of senior officers. Citing an MACC source, Bernama said the blitz was conducted at both the Mara and Mara Corp headquarters and at a corporate secretary company in the capital city. The newswire said it is understood that the raids were for the purpose of collecting documents related to claims of power abuse linked to several officers at the agencies. On Saturday, MACC confirmed that it received a report on the alleged integrity issues following the leak of an internal document implicating five Mara executives. This came a day after Mara Chairman Datuk Sri Azizah Muhammad Dun reportedly denied allegations of abuse of power or mismanagement after the said document was posted and widely circulated online. According to Bernama, she also said internal investigations had been initiated at Mara Corp to review the documents and ensure that the company's good governance is intact. Meanwhile, the five officials named in the document have reportedly denied any involvement in abuse of power. They are said to have lodged separate police reports yesterday. Former Goldman Sachs banker Roger Ng will finally get his day in court to face US federal charges over his role in the scheme to siphon billions from 1MDB. Free on a 20 million US dollar bond, he is the only person in Goldman Sachs to stand trial in the States for the fiasco. According to a Bloomberg report, the trial, which begins with jury selection today, is expected to last at least five weeks. Ng faces up to 30 years in prison for allegedly helping Lo Tik Joe and star Goldman banker Tim Leisner launder billions of dollars embezzled from 1MDB and also violating US anti bribery laws. He ultimately received about 35 million US dollars diverted from the wealth fund into an account managed and controlled by his wife, who hasn't been charged with wrongdoing. Ng has pleaded not guilty, saying that he was the first to inform compliance about Joe Lo, sending red flag warnings not to do business with the Penang bond businessman. His lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, has also said Leisner cooperated with the US and implicated Ng to save himself, and contends that Ng, who faces a separate trial in Malaysia, played no role in the fraud.